And we're live. Okay. And I got the junk off my screen. So, hey, uh, good evening, everybody. This is Captain Ron again with uh, Fearless Fight Live. With me are my new best friends, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about them and just or talk with them. We're not gonna talk about them in just a few minutes. Uh, this is Fearless Fight Live. We do this every week for people who have a fear of flying, or people who know somebody has a fear of flying, or maybe you just want to talk about airplanes, and uh, and we're there for that too. But uh, you, you can find us on Facebook. Uh, if you're watching, you probably already knew that we have a special group. A private group called Fearless Flight Birds of a Feather, which we encourage you. We're over a thousand strong now, and it's got what we, what we call critical mass. It, it uh, just keeps growing, and it's a great place for you to get to know uh, other people and and uh, spend some time on your own, uh, either both giving and receiving uh, feedback and support for other people there. Uh, administratively, the first thing I wanted to say is is uh, if you aren't aware. Dieter has put links into both the Clear for Takeoff 201, which is our new online course, which is now up in the cloud, so you can take it no matter where you are in the world. And it, it, it above and beyond the content that's in that, and it keeps growing all the time, so it's a dynamic place to go. The best part about it is it's engaging, and uh, and you can do it anywhere in the world, and you can you can get yourself ready to fly. And and with that, we have kind of a companion, which if you're in areas in which we we have we end up flying in our clear for takeoff 301 class uh you can actually enroll in that as well right now coming up the next two clear for takeoff 301 classes where we actually take a group of people most many if not all of them will have gone through the 201 course and uh, the next one is scheduled for october 15th i will fly over to uh, burbank and i'll fly with a group of people that that the number is growing and we'll go from burbank to sacramento and back that day and uh and have a little ceremony when we get done at the end of the day and then on october 22nd we'll do a class out of Phoenix here. So if you live in the Phoenix area and you can join us on October 22nd, we'd love to have you. Or if you're in the LA area and you can make it on October uh, 15th, we'd love to have you there. And, there, and we were gonna do that a little, we were gonna do that those classes this month, but I just had a lot of requests if we can move it a little bit toward later in the year, I suppose everybody wants to get back and get settled from the summer. And also they wanna get, uh, most of the people wanted to do it closer to the holiday season so that they can make plans to fly. So we're really happy to, to, to accommodate that. So um, newsworthy items, there was one thing I wanted to mention, it, speaking of the Birds of a Feather private group, uh, where we, we have a lot of good comments in there, Leticia Lynham uh, made a comment. She flew this week from Sacramento to LA or something. I forget where, what the destination was, but, and she was quite nervous and, and, and she was, you know, she's been doing the work. She took the class and, and uh, is working really hard on it. And she got the biggest kick and everybody re reading her comments in there also did. She had a fly that entered the cabin and kept her company all the way to her destination. And she just got the biggest kick out of, out of the fact that a fly could do that. And uh, we, we do sometimes use those because they act, we can actually take off with greater gross weight if we have flies on board because they actually generate lift. And if you believe that, we've got some land in Florida for you as well. So, anyway. uh, okay. And uh, let's see. Do we want to mention the, a little bit about that the turbulence, it, real quick, Eric? Talking about the 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 uh, the article where the the they said, "Watch out, the world's going to hell in a handbasket, and there's more turbulence." Well, all oh, that's true, but as Ron mentioned, that's that's just making clickbait out of us to to scare us. Uh, obviously, these severe weather patterns and, and climatic things are going on that are much different than any of us have experienced in our lifetime. Uh, the frequency is greater and they're more severe, but we still have fairly powerful forecasting tools, uh, fairly powerful tools to detect um, uh, problems that are going to cause turbulence, and we'll use the same techniques to avoid them. Uh, specifically, clear air turbulence. Uh, being the most hazardous because it's not really detectable unless somebody in front of you has reported it and you suspect that it might be there. And this thing was saying, well, in, in the next 30 years that these events could double and they're infrequent uh, at best now. And the injuries that result 
from that are to people who are not seat belted in. So always, always, always wear your seat belt. Let's get up. Um, and to the poor flight attendants, um, if the if the pilots wander into this unexpectedly and they're standing up, they're the eighty percent of the injuries are to the flight attendants uh, because they're loose and they have a three to four hundred pound cart that they might get smacked with uh, in close vicinity. Um, so it it is a serious issue. It's nothing to panic about. Um, as alternative fuels come along, hopefully we'll be able to do something to check. Uh, uh, some of these um, inputs into the into the atmosphere and and make a difference, but in terms of going to bed and worrying about that, um, I wouldn't. Uh, I would just wear your seatbelt. That's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, and the key is you wear your seatbelt. Whenever you read people getting hurt, it's because they were either flight attendants and they were up and and didn't expect it, or they were someone who's who who, who was either disregarding the seatbelt or got got caught out of it as well so if you're fast not, yeah i was going to say it's not just the turbulence too but but what eric said and ron said you know about wearing your seatbelt all the time i know it can be a little uncomfortable and for some people it's it may be a psychological problem as far as keeping that seatbelt on but we we really want to and, it, and it's not just us when the flight attendants go by and they say please buckle your seatbelt and they give you a passengers very often give you a dirty look like you're you're trying to be mean to them, but it's an FAA thing. It's not, it's not just we're trying to uh, be boss. We're, we're not trying to be the boss of you, as my daughter used to say when she was little. You know, <laughs> you're not the boss of me. Yeah. Um, but the FAA and my company, they're the boss of us. And so you need to keep your seatbelt buckled. Certainly, when the lights on, when the lights off, still keep it buckled. And when we land or when we're taxiing. You keep it on until we are parked at the gate. All kinds of things can happen still when you're on the ground and you think everything is cool. The plane can come to an incredibly sudden stop for all kinds of reasons. And so you're really not safe, safe, safe until we're parked at the gate and the captain has turned that light off. So just keep it on all the time. And whatever discomfort you might experience, it yeah. pales in comparison to having a broken leg <laughs> right. or, cash in your eye, right. or a trip to the ER when you when you get there or land short right. of your destination because we got to take you over there. So right. anyway, exactly. all right. Thanks. So today I, I have these special guests. Uh, I, I'm going to just kind of highlight it. Um, we were talking today. This is this is Sai and, uh, and Sarika. Uh, Sai has had issues with flying. He, he flew, I'm going to let him do a greater in-depth background, but he flew comfortably like so many of you out there until a, a, a certain time and then it became uncomfortable. And his, uh, his fiance here, uh, Sarika, she, you know, has been through this with him and, uh, and we're going to, I'm going to have her talk about as many of you, if you're a partner of someone who's afraid to fly, you know, what it, what it's, it's kind of tough on you, you know, when you feel helpless and don't know what to do. So, so I'll just start off with some questions. So, so you flew how much when in your, in your job? And prior so to, prior I to used this? to fly like uh, three flights a week, yeah. um, sometimes even four. Yeah. So and that used to be every week. Yeah. Regardless yeah. Of and then, and then what happened? So, um, so we used to fly. So as part of uh, being a consultant, so yeah. we used to fly a lot and then due to COVID, like um, there was a halt to all the operations. So we started working from home. Yeah. And um, yeah. So since it stopped all of a sudden, so the interaction with the flights has been reduced to minimum to none. So it, Every flight that I take after that, it's that has been challenging, and um, especially the last flight which I had to take to get back to India. So uh, I had like a major panic attack, like where I thought like I would die without even going into the flight. Like I couldn't even like yeah. dare step into that uh, flight. So I just came back. Yeah, I couldn't even do it. Have, and have you been you and Sai been together for that? For, yes. from the transition mm -hmm. or or and you flew you were with him before when no, no, I was no. Not okay. with him when so you picked flying. him up in his in his yes grounded state yes yes yeah. he didn't okay. fly for three years yeah because of covid yeah and all of a sudden he, I, he told me that he was a little anxious about flight <laughs> right. so i was like okay you know it'll be fine no big deal yeah just put on some headphones listen to some music you'll be fine right. just go yeah. sit there 
So we went inside. Uh, we, I was supposed to fly with him from uh, DFW to uh, Florida. Uh -huh. And he's going to take another flight from there. And uh, we got into the flight and uh, like he. Uh oh. Uh oh. I wonder if I need to jump off. I was late. Yeah, so I, that's unfortunately not us. That's um, Captain Ron. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. While while we're waiting here, um, Leslie. Oh, are we, it, oh yeah, um, you are in practice session. Okay. No, Ron, your internet somehow is a little choppy. Sketchy. Okay. Yeah, very sketchy. As a, um, so you it, put us in a practice, it put us in a practice session. Yeah, so we can restart it, but okay. Do yeah. you know how? Okay. Yeah. Here okay. We go. We're, we're back on. So, where did you lose us? Um, about, a, I'd say 30 seconds, but 45 seconds or so. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And so, Sarika was just sharing, you know, you know, or what her experience was. What was it like for you when you would watch him? Yeah, it's painful. It is yeah. mostly because I'm trying to help him and I don't know how to do it. Yeah. And yeah. I seeing the person trying so hard and breaking down is is very hurtful. Like I'm like watching videos, googling everything to yeah. see, you know, what can we do to yeah. like help him out yeah. and like try to talk him out of it. You know, trying to explain, but I know that like you know. I, any, any anything I say is not helping. Right, it's and and thing. and sometimes the the it gets so bad that when you're trying to help and he's doing the best that he can and he just gets the the, the mm. person gets stressed and overwhelmed and then they may bark at you and then what's that yeah. like? <laughs> it happened multiple times and um, I don't know what to say. I feel very sad and yeah. like I'm like, what do I do now? Like I'm just trying to help you. Like yeah. I don't. I'm not enjoying this. I'm just trying to help you, yeah. like help you push there, like try to keep you there. But I just feel very sad when that happens. But. So you and I, we, we figured what three weeks ago, maybe we talked about uh, two time? weeks back. Two like, weeks, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were, you obviously were in really, really pressing for this because what, what's, what's come up for you? What, what, what's the reason you really needed to fly now? So I have a, a visa appointment that I have to get to in India. So it's like a big thing for me and my job and everything. So, uh, I already pushed it like twice because of this. Like I'm like this time I have to really do it. Like I don't want to like push it any further and like go down the rabbit hole and like mess up too many things. Like, uh, uh, I have to, get this over with one one way or other so and, and if i understood correctly it, it before covid there were play, there were closer alternatives yeah you could have driven but now the only place you can go is india is india wow crazy yeah. so pre-covid like there were situations like where i could drive up to canada yeah. and get that stamped and get it done but yeah. uh with covid so all the embassies around are closed so yeah. i have to go back so, to the country. so you have to leave the country actually right go to an embassy yes. and then reapply to come in yeah and you were telling me a green card even is yeah. like 90 years waiting yes yeah. As of now, for Indians, yeah. uh, for for Asians, especially China, China and uh, India, so yeah. it's almost like over ninety year of wait time. Wow, well, I I don't think I'll be at the party when you if you ever did. <laughs> I am not sure even we'll. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, yeah, sure. exactly. So anyway, so we started talking. You got the harmonizer, and you, and you were you were very diligent and doing things, and then and then you called me up, and and we were gonna you were gonna drive up, and we we're just gonna see if I could get you on an airplane just to, just to kind of desensitize you, and then and then while I was trying to get that set up, then you said, check that. How about if we just go fly? Yeah. And so so that's it. And you just drove up here. You got here the night before last. Yes. Or no, was it? No, yes. We got here uh, yesterday, yesterday afternoon. afternoon. Okay. And and you arrived, we talked, and, and how was he doing? We'll ask you for that. <laughs> you remember how many times I tried to call you and message you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was everywhere. I'm trying to like talk him out of it, like tell him that, you know, it's tomorrow. Let's not worry about today. Let's just yeah. stay calm, sleep, you know, have some good food. Right. But 
no he yeah. was everywhere he's like what if it doesn't happen tomorrow yeah. what if ron like tries to keep me there till the doors close <laughs> but after that if i'm having a panic attack what is it what is going to happen you yeah. know there's not going to be a doctor up there so no one's going to help me so i'll be isolated i'll i don't know i don't i don't know if i can make yeah. it i don't know if i'm going to go there but i want to try i want to like do something but i'm not confident enough to like, go yeah. to the airport at least in in you're symbolic of, I would say, I would say probably 90% of the people, everybody to some degree, you know, has, is afraid if the airplane would crash or something, but, but that's, that's very, very low on people's priorities. The number of priority is what am I going to do if I can't manage my own emotions when they close the door? Yeah. Yeah. So that was my, yeah. my, the biggest fear that yeah. like they close the door and then I don't have the control. Yeah. And when we would talk, we did a coaching session before you left, and then and then we talked last night again. And you were really struggling. And and I don't I I, I don't want to betray you know make you look you know bad or anything, but I just want to share with people because there's so many people and nobody nobody you know I can I don't even know what that's like. I have a good sense because I've done it for 35 years, but but watching you, oh my God, you're I'm I'm like Sarika, you know, my heart goes out to you, and and you know and. It, I, we, I talked about, you know, when I first started doing this 35 years ago and I flew with people, it took me a couple of years before I, before I could control my own emotions, watching people and feeling helpless. And I've watched people break down in the jetway and all that. And, and I finally had to get to the point, you know, because it brings my anxiety up because I feel like I, I'm helpless and I don't know what to do. And, and this was a, a real reminder I got, so I grew a little bit myself on this trip because I watched you and we, we had a moment today. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And we, so we basically, I just, I talked to them and I, I try and engage and, and believe it or not, the last thing I want to talk about with people like, with like Cy is flying, you know, we went, because that's not what the, the average person does, but, but in the back of your mind, and he's very bright, both of them are super, super bright. And and uh, in the back of his mind, he says, "I know what you're trying to do, Ron. You're trying to get, convince me not to pay attention to you, or, or to pay attention to my inner thoughts." And it and it wasn't working. Wasn't no, it? so I mean, last night it was more like uh, I mean, I couldn't like get the thought of that like tomorrow is the flight day. Yeah, and I have to get onto the flight. So because I drove so much and I have to do is this time. Uh, one, I mean, you know. It was like a split mind. So at one point I wanted to do it. The other point is like uh, whether I'll be able to do it. So once I, uh, so I talked to Ron and Ron said that like take one step at a time. So first step is sleep. Uh, then the next step is get up and uh, freshen up. And third step is like get into the car, get here. So take the steps and then we'll see what happens. So I tried it, but it's the same thing. So the mind takes like, keep talking, talking, talking. So I just like went to sleep and you wouldn't believe I woke up at 1.30, 2.30, 3.30, 4.30. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was checking the time. So how long, like how, how much more time I have like to sleep. So that's so, why some people, it, being on death row would be a welcome relief. Yeah. <laughs> from having to fly there. Yeah. But chief, I think that was a brilliant uh, diversionary tactic that you haven't used before to get the name spelled wrong, the thing not matching his ID, <laughs> take it to the wrong concourse, yeah. completely screwing all that up. So believing it was all planned. He was <laughs> all planned. Yeah. believing that he was going to be thrown in a federal lockup and not actually have to get on an airplane, I'm sure he wasn't worried at all. That was brilliant. <laughs> there are a lot of other things to be afraid of. Flying yeah. is the least of them. <laughs> so we so we got to the to the to the airport and and we had a lot of support from from the folks there and we had we had some irregularities about getting the tickets and 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 getting to the right gate and all that but we got over there and they were nice enough to I asked them I said if we come early could we maybe just get on the airplane before the they start the boarding process and and they accommodated us which was really I, I think was helpful just and and when we got on there the, the flight attendants weren't even there yet and the pilot was the captain was sitting back in the cabin. And and so we just had a little conversation with him. And of course, he's trying to tell Sai, oh, it's, it's safe and all that. But that's that's really not the heart of the issue. But I think it it was connecting. And that's why yeah. that's why I recommend people try to connect with the pilot. So yeah. the pre-walk actually kind of freaked me out and also helped me. So the, the thing that helped me, at least like for my personally, was that uh, I generally like used to try and take like some other airlines. Like I never flew with Southwest before. This was my like first uh, two legs. So there was always this like uh, um, business class and then like the economy. 
so i always used to be at the back side or i'm at least in the middle of the plane so like getting in here so i i i was seeing that the entire like the from the first row to the end so it was just like one set so there is a possibility that i can sit up in the front like where i can like look at the exit like that was my fear so i thought maybe being closer to it would help so he's that like a getaway driver at a bank robbery. He wants to make sure that he's got a clear shot to getting away from the scene there. Yeah. So getting there, like, kind of like helped me. Like I knew that okay, so this place might be available to sit. Like it's not like a business class, so it's it's still an economy. So that kind of actually helped me. So yeah. that is one thing that helped me. And I talked to their uh, pilots, and I talked to their uh, gate agent, and there was this gate agent. Gilia was like she was super nice she super was like nice. even I have a flight anxiety and I have a flight <laughs> coming up so even I am like worried that I want to fly but it's you are going to be fine so I mean day day to day like looking at like people like uh, having like same kind of fear that you have like uh, it it kind of helps you thinking that okay like I'm not alone in the world so there are people helping me who don't have that but there are other people out there who is also like going through same thing as me and still like trying to get out of it so yeah we had we had two of the people we ran in today yeah employees of Southwest that said oh I don't like to fly yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that was interesting so when we got on the airplane when we finally boarded you, you picked the front row so you could see the exit and and so and your main reason was you had a bailout plan, yeah. right? And so I physically positioned myself somewhat in between the line of sight on purpose. And we were talking and you were really engaged in everything. And and I, I don't know what it was like for you, but it just kind of passed. And then we started pushing back. And then that's when I think you said, oh, I got to get off, I got to get off. But you hung on it. I'm telling you, this is one of the most courageous people I've ever flown with. It was really, really inspiring to do that, to watch you. And so we pushed back and we you actually did, you got to the point where we took off and you were doing pretty well. I thought you were making, you were having some insights and, and, and whatnot. And then uh, Sadiq and I were kind of sitting back, relaxed <laughs> and enjoying. And then the bottom I dropped out. Yeah. So I don't know what was yeah, the yeah. uh trigger point like what was like the topic that we were discussing like we were just simply sitting like three people just talking like right mm -hmm. now so suddenly there was this urge from the inside that like you know what you're not safe like let's get out <laughs> and I I kind of like panicked and like I had like a major panic so I was yeah. like you know what I need to get out and the flight was in the midair like <laughs> yeah. even I know I don't make much sense but <laughs> like I need to get out like tell the captain to like turn around so i just i even like uh, kind of reached out to the uh, flight attendant and i told her that you know what i need to get around so <laughs> i was telling ron like make it land like i want to land right now i wish you know i i love to get these on video because i would love to have given that to, to uh Cy. Yeah. and and i would love to have gotten the flight attendant's face on video when oh, he when Cy said Tell the captain we've got to land. And I'm like, I was, I had two choices at that point in time. I was trying to go either disappear or I was going to go take a seat in the back <laughs> because I had no idea. And and what we did, we just we just started in increasing this the stock. And I just had you look at me and, and look at Sarika and just and just and you it was amazing. You you focused and you and you actually brought yourself down. I mean, you did it. You know, yeah. <laughs> and, and it was it was really something. And then it, so you just describe just how bad it was. So it was and like uh, it was not like any panic attack I had like before. So it was like so pulsating that I just I just want to like rip a hole to the air, airplane and just <laughs> like like jump from there. So it was it was at that. Uh, thing but um, um, as earlier um, um, you were mentioning right like uh, seat belts are important. Yeah. So I unfortunately I had my seatbelt on. <laughs> so I was like trying to get up and I couldn't. And in the panic situation, I had like no control over my hands to like unlock it. So I was trying to get up and I was still in the seat. So that like kind of grounded me like for a fraction of a second. Yeah. So then like Ron like immediately like like just blocked my view and he's like, you know, like it's fine, it's fine. Like you you breathe, you breathe. So, but like, trust me, like any, any one in that situation, like wouldn't like know what to do, but then he told me like, grab the bag and just like, so we took, breathe into it. So we took a, a six sack, yeah. I fashioned it with a little mouthpiece and I said, try this. And he put it up to his face 
and the combination of of being able to visually see it looked like we were in the er with a with a breathing device it was extremely powerful and he was watching that and he actually slowed his breathing down and it and it brought him back in there i mean that's the first time i've ever been able to enable that and and uh and it it, it worked like a charm yeah it so it, i mean i never knew like i i avoided all the flights thinking this particular thing would happen so it was like my worst fear coming true so i it came and then like when this sack thing happened like i i was current i was like super surprised like even like driving here like right now so i was discussing it with her that like how can like a paper bag like could like <laughs> reduce my fear within like 30 40 seconds like I, I i was quite surprised because it was like the epitome like i never had such a kind of um intensity before but all it took was 30 seconds 30 to 40 seconds like i was just breathing in and suddenly i calmed down yeah. and trust me like i didn't even have like slightest of episode like until i landed so it was like it was something like I think I could describe. So it was and super. The, the part uh, that I'm going to. Did you, when you uh, asked the flight attendant, uh, let her know that you would be interested in having her have the captain turn the airplane around, did she have a panic attack too? And Ron handed her another a, six sack? Or did she. Was, was a male and a female <laughs> and, and the male. Yeah. He, that's the look he had on I his face. I was going to ask that question. I thought, I really want to know what the flight attendant said. They uh, just kind of ignored <laughs> the whole thing. It was, but and yeah. then one of them did get up and she said, "Could I get you a, some water or anything?" So water. we got a little glass of water with some ice, and, yeah, and then Sarika okay. took the ice and she was rubbing his head and doing it. And, and it, here's a question, and we'll we'll find the answer to Diane. You know, one of the thoughts I had was for people like that. If you know those cold compresses you can get in the drugstore, yeah. I wonder if those are uh, if those are allowed. You know, because they're they're more than three ounces probably. If they're, you know, if they're frozen, you can bring things on that are already frozen. Well, you know, you, you know, but, yeah, but, okay, so that's mean, but, but you know, though, I'm talking about the ones that have a chemical reaction. You no, know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll I have to check on that. But you can. Yeah. And that, and, you, and we use the we, we take, you know, cold paper towels and that sort of thing. <clears throat> and we'll put them sometimes in a rubber glove with ice. Yeah. So you can have basically an ice bag for the same kinds yeah. of things. So Patrick that would be to get in we'll, yeah. put on the list of things to do yeah. and all that. The thing I, I want to without I don't mm. I don't I don't want to make make you uncomfortable, but the thing that was so touching for me was is when he after he, he recovered that he had a cathartic moment. I mean it was really, really emotional. And 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 he's a he's a he has an engineer's mind, so it's very it's very task oriented and things like that. And it was really touching. And he just rolled over and he let, he let Sarika hold him. And uh, I mean, I, it was, it was just amazing to watch it. And you got a feel for just how much, not only him, but so many people, what's going on in there, what a release it was for that. So, so we, we, from then on, I mean, he would, oh my gosh, he was animated talking. It was, it was a, it was a different person. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and we got down, we spent, we spent a couple hours on the ground in Burbank and, and uh, they went out outside of security, uh, walked around a little bit, came back in and we, we, we had a little bite to eat there and, and we got ready to go and he was doing just famously. And then we got on the airplane and then you had a little bit of a reset. Yeah. So talk about that. So, I mean, uh, between the flights, like we had uh, the first flight. So when I was, when it was about to land, so I was just uh, telling Ron that like, I don't want this to end. Like I want to feel it. <laughs> he said, I don't want, this is the first time I don't want the flight to end. Yeah. So it was like, I wanted to feel it some more. Like it's like ending too soon. So when we landed and then there was like two and a half hours of time, like before the next flight. So again, so I, there was enough time for my mind to get bored and I was thinking, okay, so that is maybe a one-off situation. You could pull it off. So what if it comes back in the second flight? So I had like gotten in, I mean, it, it's like kind of fortunate events that happened, like uh, everything. So first, like I told you, so there was that um, big guy that scared me, like when it was coming in, <laughs> right. that's one. And then the boarding pass thing. So it, it kind of induced some kind of anxiety in me. And like when I got in, so there were like six to seven old people. So that were pre-boarding before us. So by the time I got in, so the, my favorite bail seat was gone. 
so i had to sit in a back row so i was like will i be fine so i don't know so i still thought okay like next step is to sit and see so we had a fight over who sits where but then i finally <laughs> decided that okay ron will take like the last seat and i will take the aisle because i can't fit my legs and uh, we just sat there and we kept talking like i had like very i i would say like 10% of the moment like i had in my first flight just a tiny bit of thought but i kept talking to ron and somehow like we just didn't think of like uh, doors closing or anything so even though i my logical and like my active mind knew the uh, doors were closing so i didn't mind that much i was like okay like let me see like even in the first flight i i did not mind the doors closing so let me see what happens yeah. and it was it was noticeable when you know when i'm with people like that you can see when the the lights on but nobody's home in those moments where they start really getting locked up but it did it passed and the insight that you had when when you had that breakthrough moment going over really reset rapidly and 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 again you had the animation then throughout the rest of the flight so it was really 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 nothing by comparison yeah so, even in the second flight there were yeah. like minute moments yeah. but then like yeah. uh we just kept talking and at a point it was like you know what let's stop talking like i'll sleep <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah he said enough ron and i know some <laughs> of you can can identify with that but anyway so uh i don't know if we have any questions or anything or comments uh, uh Dieter, but but i just i i wished I wish I could have captured this on video for people it, because everybody thinks that they're so bad off and, and, and it's, it's, it's not possible, but it truly is. But the, but the thing that really set, set the, the stage for today was that he did not get off the airplane. And, mm. and he's, he's like many of you out there who have gotten off. When you get off, you get a shot of dopamine, just the same as if you went down and got a shot of heroin. And your brain says, aha, we pulled that off. And it makes it that much more difficult the next time. And, and in doing that, that's what I think made it so hard for you last night and leading up to this. Yeah. But, so but prior yeah. to this, like I had almost like eight flights, which I yeah. just boarded and just got off. Yeah. eight to ten flights so it, it was building up and up and up yeah but like i mean i know like many of the people that are watching like wouldn't like uh uh be happy about uh what i'm saying but i would i even i was not happy like uh <laughs> listening to that but you i feel like the ripping of the bandit is the only way yeah so yeah. if now like if you ask me would i go through that moment again like i'll definitely go through it because after that like what i felt was nothing explainable and that and that's key what he what he's saying is that he does not expect to be anxiety free for, uh, for now and forever but what he is saying is now he has that positive experience on the other side you know because before you're climbing the mountain if you never if you never get to the summit of the mountain you never know what's on the other side and that's the nature of anticipatory anxiety it's always worse than when you get to the summit, because you can see what you're what you're up against, and it being a human being, you can come up with solutions. But now he's seen that, and now he knows that. Yeah, I. It doesn't. It's not. It may not be comfortable. It may even be ugly. But but I don't think that. I don't think it'll be that ever like it was today. But he has the confidence that that if he keeps pressing forward, he'll get to that relief there. So anyway, it doesn't scare the flight attendant anymore. Everybody will live happily ever after. <laughs> absolutely so yeah, don't, whatever you do don't scare the flight attendants we're already yeah. scared enough as it is right. Right. the first flight oh. male attendant was like i i i don't think he will ever want to see me on a plane <laughs> <laughs> actually actually that's a little hard for me because they they did come back and support him and they and and they saw they they had a real keen sense because we were i mean we were eye to eye with them we were in the right side of the airplane and we could see them behind the 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 bulkhead over there and they were watching this whole show and I, and we had prefaced it you know we said you know he's it's it's, it's going to be a difficult flight for him and yeah. they were like oh my gosh but yeah. they they jumped up and they did come to the aid and that's why again we emphasize letting people know letting the crew know that you're you're a, a fearful flyer and and yeah. they, they still they'll they'll give you some compassion and stuff and that's a, that yeah i just wanted to um say that there were a lot of hearts and um you know side as you were sharing your story so a lot of the people really really can relate to and i just want to you know verbalize when i say well 
thank you for the courage that you really yeah. displayed because you know it, it it really takes that facing that inside of you and and um yeah I'm so I'm proud with you and I'm sure Sarika is, is as well yeah. and this happened on a short on a moment's notice basically and they drove from Dallas to get here so you know and and I'm getting dinner. I'm getting a traditional Indian dish here too. So we no nothing offense or no offense, but we're gonna leave you in just a minute and go eat the food that they did. <laughs> said you do not have to do that. But anyway, but it, it was fantastic. But wow. the the thing is, this was I, I I'm not kidding. I grew myself in this because this is the first time I've ever seen anybody get quite to that level. And and uh, wow, I would it it. it it was like, okay, Mr. Smart Alec, you know, what are you going to do here? And all I did was just, I just thought of grabbing the, the things that I talked about, but, but never did. And, and so yeah. you all can do that. This is available to anybody out there if, if, and you need to stay connected to us or to somebody else. You need a sense of community with other people out there. Nobody understands you like the people like Cy uh, who, who have been through that. So anyway, and look at next trip, go into to, to India, right? Yeah. And yeah, that's going to be New York, Dubai, and then and then up it's India. just uh, DFW to Qatar, Qatar to. Oh, India. oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's a fourteen-hour flight. So we were just discussing about that, and uh, we were thinking that even if the same kind of episode comes, we know it lasts for forty seconds. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's anyway. not going to last forever. Anything. Yeah. Right. We know how to handle it now. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Well, that's this show. Unless you guys have got any closing comments or anything out well, there. Um, Jim, I want to. I recognize Jim for uh, look, um, telling us that according to the TSA app, uh, both the hot and the cold packs are allowed in okay. the carry-ons so as well as checked luggage. So, because yeah. uh, because that I, I think that was it, it gave you something to do, and I think it, you you genuinely appreciated yeah. it. Yeah. And and Sai was saying just before that that when when he had, when he when he got triggered there he had hot flashes you know he could feel it behind his ears and you know very he's a, it was a very physiologically active person mm -hmm. oh my god you know he, his heart palpitations were were driving him crazy and all yeah. I did was I said I said you know notice even if your heart's palpitating notice that you're still functional things are still working. And when you and when you with the bag and, and slowing down his breathing, you could see his cognitive capabilities come back and he came right back in the moment. But again, yeah. I'd like to take complete credit for it, but it's not it was not my fault that he got through that. It was it was <laughs> all of his efforts and his ability to refocus himself. And, and so and it was surprisingly, a, like uh, we talked about so many games and everything. Yeah. Trust us, like we didn't we did not even touch one of them. Yeah. <laughs> like we were just talking yeah. the whole flight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he, 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 getting through those moments, I think, is what terrifies most people. So anyway, so there's hope. We, of course, we've seen that for 35 years, but until you get there, you don't know. So anyway, thanks to everybody. Thanks to you, Sai. Thanks, thanks to you, Sarika. Thanks mm -hmm. to Dieter and and Diane and and Eric. And uh, that'll do it for another week of uh, Fearless Flight Live. Keep coming back, and it does work if you work it. <laughs> thanks a lot, guys. Bye.